Look at the difference between the people that look at things from a duress mindset and people that look at things from a prosperity mindset, right? <clears throat> and this is not the prosperity gospel. That's not what we're talking about right here, right? You first have to change your mindset towards me. I don't know anybody that be sitting there commenting on other people's stuff or whining or saying, oh, you could have opened a homeless shelter. I don't know any of those type of people that's ever gotten rich. I don't know any of those people that's ever gotten rich. You have to change your mindset towards what it is that you're you're shooting for in order to understand what it is that you need to do. Because once you change your mindset, then you start actually manifesting it by putting the work in. Think about it. We talk about faith all the time, right? People always talk about faith. You just go to have the faith of the mustard seed. No, that's only half of the equation. Faith without works is dead. You actually have to manifest it through your mind and then put the work in to actually have God meet you halfway. You can't just do it by itself. You got to actually put the work in. But without the mindset, you're never going to execute and put the work in. That's just, that's just real. You know, one of my favorite people is Rick Ross. One of my favorite people is Ross. And let me tell you why he's one of my favorite people. Because he's not the highest selling artist, right? But it's his consistency. Despite all of the opposition, despite all of the problems, despite any kind of issues, despite not being the highest selling artist, he's the owner. And despite having the odds against him, he's consistent enough to actually get to the results. And I like his mindset. It's his mindset um, that often leads to some of the best results, right? So I was looking at an article and I was actually looking at, shout out to E, let me see what E talking about. He said, have a drink on me, chief. I pre Thank you, my friends, for supporting the platform. I jump on this and I make sure I have these conversations with you guys every single day so I can hopefully add value, take time out of my days for you guys to pour into me with the super chats, with the cash apps, with anything, Patreon members that love me, I try to give it back to you guys. I appreciate y'all for holding me down. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, but I like his mindset. And a lot of people don't like it because they can't relate to it, but I absolutely can, right? And in this specific article and in one of these videos that I was watching, he said that he bought a $1 million mansion just to ride by the place that he wind up buying before he owned it, which is the Holyfield Estate which I think he called it something like the, I don't remember what he called it, but he said he bought a $1 million mansion just to ride by the place that he wind up buying. He visualized that stuff, right? He had to change his mindset to even feel like he can afford and get to a certain type of space to even, even be able to buy that type of stuff. I'm gonna just tell you the biggest distraction for you guys, <clears throat> Y'all put all of y'all energy in a, in a selling drugs, scamming, hating other people. You spend all of your time whining and complaining about other people when in reality, if you spent the, the majority of that energy <clears throat> and change your mindset towards how it is that you look at money, you would have completely different results. So first it starts with the mind because every day I give you the information. <clears throat> I broke down Zillow. I break down the different stocks, I pour into your businesses. But half the time is this. You got a worker's mindset, you got a duress mindset. But anyway, let's get into the article a little bit, right? So, <clears throat> he's the current uh, owner of the largest residence in the state of Georgia, but before he per purchased the promised land, yeah, he renamed it to the promised land. He manifested the major investment by moving in nearby. The property originally named uh, the villa was constructed in 1994, 235 acres when, when the Maybach Music Boss purchased it in 2014, 109 rooms, 12 bedrooms, 21 bathrooms, the largest residential pool in the country among a multitude of amenities. Here's the thing though, here's the thing though. <clears throat> I don't need 100 rooms, right? But he did. And that's what he wanted. And so the fact that he has the option to even be able to do it and then he exercised that option is the thing that you want, right? Nobody got Nobody's telling you guys that you got to have the biggest estate in your city. What I'm telling you is that you got to have the option to buy whatever it is that you visualize. But first, you got to visualize it first. I don't know nobody that's ever got to where they got without first being able to manifest it within their mind. It's first mental. 
real estate has always been an asset. Yep, we went over that. Uh, he said, you can make a new car. We gotta be able to write that off though. You can make a new car, you can't make that corner. You gotta buy that corner. If my last name is on it, you gotta come and see me. He knew what he wanted, he understood what assets was, and he started to make his move. And once he got to the bag, because most of us get to the bag, but once he got to the bag, he had access to be able to do it. And he made us a, a, a specific decision to be able to make that make that move and buy that property. Um, Ross plans to expand the former home by an additional 87 acres thanks to an adjacent property he purchased for $1 million, right? Holmes was something he was always fascinated about, so him and his homies started coming up to Atlanta, and he used to ride by there all the time, so they wasn't just there hanging in a hood. They was there trying to understand exactly what the, what the goal was and trying to figure out how they can get there. Stop, pull over, smoke one, and just be like, God damn. After I got my deal in my situation, I bought a million dollar home maybe two minutes from here that I still own that's right around the corner just so I can ride by it every day while I'm in Atlanta. And that's what the play was. Now check out the duress mindset. Check out the duress mindset. Watch this. People was commenting saying, so we just went wasting money to drive by a property. These are the people that's criticizing a millionaire. It's going to happen to you when you become a millionaire. It's a duress mindset. Look, man, go open a homeless shelter. Ain't nothing like broke people telling rich people how they supposed to spend that money. Man, go open up a homeless shelter. Shut the hell up. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. <clears throat> Anyways, the producer businessman also discussed ways that he allowed in his lavish home, which he, check this out. This is the play to create more wealth from itself, for itself, which includes film, television production, and open it up to the public in certain ways. He finesse in the game. Not only does he have the home, but he's using it as an asset to make even more money. He owns the real estate, and now he's using it in order to pay for itself. Check it out. Different films, videos, visuals, the automobiles, and the list goes on. You'd be amazed at how many offers I get every week for marriages, this and that. Yo, we just want to rent it. How much is it per hour? We put it on a platform and in a position where it's something that people from different countries just want to come. He even told the security to stop wasting his time telling people they can't pay pay money to take pictures by the gate. Coming to America too. Superfly, Drop Dead Diva is just some of the projects that the estate was used as a backdrop and he reportedly only paid $5.8 million for the property. He only paid 5.8 M's for the property. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? Look at the difference between the people that look at things from a duress mindset and people that look at things from a prosperity mindset, right? <clears throat> and this is not the prosperity gospel. That's not what we're talking about right here, right? We talking about the idea that, the idea that you first have to change your mindset towards, I don't know anybody that be sitting there commenting on other people's stuff or whining or saying, oh, you could have opened a homeless shelter. I don't know any of those type of people that's ever gotten rich. I don't know any of those people that's ever gotten rich. You have to change your mindset towards what it is that you're, you're shooting for in order to understand what it is that you need to do. Because once you change your mindset, then you start actually manifesting it by putting the work in. Think about it. We talk about faith all the time, right? People always talk about faith. You just got to have the faith of the mustard seed. No, that's only half of the equation. Faith without works is dead. You actually have to manifest it through your mind and then put the work in to actually have God meet you halfway. You can't just do it by itself. You got to actually put the work in. But without the mindset, you're never going to execute and put the work in. That's just, that's just real. <clears throat> 